Surprisingly, I've never worn this Chanel scarf, which I was like, why? So today I went ahead and tied it in a really cute princessy bow, which is why I went ahead and wore my headband as well. I also added my bracelet, which I haven't worn in a while since I was so in love with my quartier that I just sort of forgot about my costume jewelry. Welcome to another Q&A video. Hello everyone. If you're new here, my name is Amy. We have a ton of questions from my Instagram stories to answers. I'll try to link everything down below if I can still find it, but as you know, Chanel items are seasonal. So once that season is over, usually it's very, very hard to find it again unless you go consignment. All right, the first question is from Ms. Annie Mali. Do you think that the Chanel 19 will be one of your forever bags rocking it until your 60s or 70s? Absolutely, yes. So I'm gonna answer it from the point of view of my collection. And if you don't know my collection, I will link it up here. That's the most updated until I do another updated collection video. As you may know, I have a lot of mini size bags, so smaller size bags. There aren't that many other bags that are in between. Uh, actually, no, I have my trendy and my bucket bag too, but you guys get the idea. Some of you might even argue that this is a small bag because it is the small size 19. But regardless, from the standpoint of my own collection, I do feel like this is a forever bag. One, because of the size, I don't have a lot of this size bag. Two is because this bag is one of the easiest bags to wear. I need variety. I will be bored if my entire collection is just classic flaps, to be honest. There are days where I just need my bag to be an easy bag, but I still want to be cute. And honestly, this bag is cute, okay? I don't know what it is that so many people don't like it still. And that's fine because we don't have to like all the same things, but I honestly feel that this is Oh, it's such a great bag. It's so easy to get in and out. It's a single flap. It ages well for this size because I always get the smallest size. It has a very generous back pocket, which I constantly use for my phone. For a bag that fits so much, I would say that this fits probably just as much as my jumbo because I don't like to fill my jumbo because it gets so heavy. Plus the top handle helps, right? So uh, yes, for me, this is a forever bag. I don't see myself parting with it ever. I think even if I start getting into more Hermes bags. I would still keep this one because it's absolutely one of my favorites. I have to say that the 19 is higher ranked than many of my other bags. It's just that in a lot of the tag videos where we can only choose one, then of course I'm going to choose the classic flop. But in most cases, you don't just own one of each brand, right? That's just a tag, which is a great tag video by Karis that I just did recently. But I don't believe in anybody just owning one of each brand unless they're just starting out. Next question by Le Zoe Wei. Your top three Chanel SLGs. Oh, okay. I don't have a ton of SLGs. Actually, I lie. Uh, I just added a few. If you consider them SLGs, which I will be doing an unboxing, I promise. But I'm just still waiting for a few more items because you guys know uh, these collections, these items, they don't come in all at the same time. So for the moment, I would have to say that the card holder is still one of my favorite SLGs. It's just a simple, small of the goods. It's just the easiest thing to use in terms of wallet because I pretty much only use cards. Like I said, I don't own that many SLGs, um, but I'm gonna consider this a small of the good because if you buy Chanel, this is considered a small of the goods. I guess they have limits for bags, but for these, they probably let you buy more than one. So <laughs> this is just from the past, uh, the past season. So like 21B, and this is the Miss Coco chain, little clutch with chain, and it is absolutely stunning. The chain details, it says Coco on the chain, and it has a CC in here. It's the most cute little micro bag ever, and it actually fits a lot. And it is in caviar. This one is in a pale lilac color. It's absolutely stunning. I would say that this would be one of my favorite smaller than goods from Chanel because uh, I just went crazy with the trend. All of a sudden, I just decided that I need these things in my life. And after trying it out, I am more than converted. Of course, these are not everyday bags because on an everyday basis where you 
need to carry actual things, not just deconstructing everything because that's what you have to do with these little micro bags. You have to deconstruct everything, right? Take out the cards from your card holder, take out your cash, put it in there, maybe put your car keys. Stay tuned to my future unboxing video where I'm going to talk about a little bit more on the micro bag trend and why I like it so much because not only is it more of a passion purchase for me, I do think that you are buying into the cuteness and into the trend but also the fact that if there are days where you're not going to reach in and out of your bag often, this is a superb superb option. The other more recent smaller the good that I just purchased is another micro bag. I also have another one which is the round clutch but that one is from three years ago so I'll just talk about these newer ones since you guys might be more interested in these newer ones. So this one is actually a belt bag and in case you guys have not seen these from my channel yet I will link to the video where I did the modeling shot, what fits and all that video from uh, these two purchases but this is a belt bag and it's a really really cute little boy bag also from 21B collection and it's gonna be super handy again if you don't need to reach in and out of your bag super often but you still need your essential and by essential I mean your credit card, your ID, maybe some cash. It makes sense that this will not fit your life except that it does but it's just deconstructed in a way so these will come in handy on like i said days that don't you don't need to reach in and out of your bag but you still want to have your essentials next question by chris tan what advice would you give your younger self and will you choose the same job if you can turn back in time i think in terms of advice i will tell myself that everything will be okay it will be okay because no matter what challenges you get in life you always resolve it one way or another. And whether those things are life changing, because I have had a lot of life changing events throughout my life, and most of it pertaining to my health, of course, it's gonna be okay because it's just gonna become a new normal. So you just gotta take it a day at a, a, t at a time. And also the other thing I would tell myself is to, you know, have integrity and work hard, of course, which I, always uh, am a proponent about but also to forgive yourself cut yourself some slack because I've always been so hard on myself I've always been perfectionist a very interesting fact that you guys might not know uh, I guess you guys wouldn't know anyway <laughs> is that ever since I started my YouTube channel it has really allowed me to learn to accept myself even more. My videos are not perfect. They are actually far from perfect. My appearance on my channel is also far from perfect. Uh, I mean, I try, right? I obviously try. I experiment and I do different things. Anything related to just your output. YouTube is such a great place to learn to be more accepting because <laughs> You can't otherwise survive, right? I mean, su by survive, I mean that you can't otherwise um, continue to do it in a committed and dedicated uh, long-term way because if you're always going to criticize yourself, if you're always never going to be happy about your output, which, or maybe I should say, if you're always going to not accept whatever output you've put out, then you'll never really continue to succeed in YouTube. And by succeeding, I don't mean to have a million subscribers and whatnot. I just mean that you will stop YouTube. If you're just a very hard person in general, um, on yourself especially, YouTube is such a great place to sort of unlearn that and to be easier on yourself, if that makes sense. Uh, and it also propels you to um, challenge yourself, right? Because it's also not easy to continue doing YouTube and come up with new content. In terms of job, whether I would choose the same job if I were to turn back in time, I would say no, I wouldn't. In early 2000, because that's when I went to university, computer science or even engineering, those kind of fields are kind of like the it type of um, fields to get into, especially if you're into science or into math, but you're not so much into the actual science and not so much into the actual math, and you're not into biology, and you don't want to do anything health related, then the next best thing <laughs> is to do computer science or 
information technology because that's the booming. That's what was booming at the time, right? Because everything is computerized, everything is digitized. If I could go back in time, I would be braver and instead of choosing a field of study that was more common sense, because it was a common sense to choose information technology or computer science since, you know, it wasn't like easy to do, but it's just common sense because it was the booming field. But if I was braver, I would have chosen the more challenging path um, because, you know, after you get a computer science degree, chances are you're going to get a job pretty easily. So to answer your question, I would have chosen a different path and I still don't necessarily know where because I think from the creative point of view, a creative path is so hard, so cutthroat. That's definitely one of the reasons why I didn't get into it. And uh, also just from um, disapproval from family where the career path is more uncertain. And it's not necessarily uncertain and certain. It's just that you have to really hustle, right? You have to work super hard and uh, get ahead and competition is stiff. And that is not to say that other fields are not stiff, but it's a different type of challenge, I think. Um, whenever you deal with artists or designers, it's just such an unknown, right? You don't immediately know whether you're going to be able to pay your bills. That's the difference. Whereas you get an IT job, you, you're going to pay your bills. <laughs> so um, I wish that I did something different, but we can't go back in time, so we'll leave the pass at that and I'll just be creative on this space on YouTube. In Style Abbey, do you condition your bags? Do you recommend it? I absolutely do not condition my bags. I've always, always said that I uh, treat my bags as naturally as possible. And the best, best way to treat your bags is just to use them carefully. I feel like people who condition their bags, they're so afraid to put wear and tear and that is totally understandable because I wouldn't want my bags to look like super worn either which is why I treat them so well but at the same time I don't need to condition them I just uh, am lucky that I live in Vancouver where storage is very easy so that's one issue taken care of but number two is that when I do use my bags I'm careful I don't throw them around and I just am mindful of what I wear. So if it's a light color bag, I'm not gonna wear jeans and wool coats that are dark color, etc., etc. And if it's a lambskin, I'll just be mindful of sharp objects, even jewelry, nails, and all that stuff. Of course, a little bit of wear and tear you can't avoid, but some wear and tear, a little bit of wear and tear can be rectified. You can buff it away. And because I can rotate my bags, it really does help too with general wear and tear it just prolongs the life of all of your bags and at the end of the day let's say if you know in 20 years time if i still own this bag which i like i said earlier i would still um i think a little bit of wear and tear is totally normal because if you're actually using your item then it should have a little bit of wear and tear you know what i mean i can be clumsy but i'm not in general a clumsy person i'm very methodical and um just careful <laughs> in general i worry a lot but um, if you're a clumsy person, then you could just buy bags that will work in your favor, right? Materials that are more durable, darker colors, or you can treat your bags if you want to, but I just don't, so I can't really recommend anything. Also, by the same person, are the Pearl Crush mini bags worth it? I have definitely recently been watching a lot, lot more unboxings from people that live in China, especially Hong Kong, because I understand the language. You can see that they buy a lot more lambskin. They are a lot more daring in terms of color. They go for a lot of pinks, a lot of whites. They are just so accepting of the fact that certain materials are not going to be as long lasting and they buy it more from the point of view of loving the item. And so when I read this question, whether the Pearl Crush Mini is worth it, I think it is worth it as long as you love it. I suspect that you worry about several things, resale value, wear and tear and durability, right? So resale value is so subjective. I think certain colors will always resell better. Also depends on the market. I feel like in the Asian market, they are crazy about the Coco Crush. They love the Coco Crush so much because most Asian people are shorter. So I think the market also has a lot to do with it. And in terms of wear and tear, I do think that the Coco Crush line is just a different aesthetic. 
it's supposed to be more vintage looking it's supposed to be softer it doesn't have the classic uh, base which is harder the coco crush line is soft you can actually just mush it right so that's the coco crush line and even the leather the lambskin leather on the coco crush has those dips because it's just a softer texture less padding type of situation so is it worth it i think it's worth it if you like it do i like it no i don't like it um i don't dislike it i just don't like it so i've never been so drawn to buy one actually i do like their <laughs> again it comes back to the micro bags i do like their micro bag line in the coco crush for some reason i think the coco crush line for the micro bags they use a calfskin and it's just shiny very puffy calfskin but for their mini bags they use lambskin and it's very very soft and mushy cosmic berries i really can't decide between the gabrielle and the coco handle help pretty sure that i bought my gabrielle before my coco handle i'll have to double check but i'm pretty sure i did and i'll do the same exact thing because I honestly end up using the Gabrielle more than the Coco handle. Maybe it is the fact that I can get in and out of my Gabrielle so much easier. Whereas the Coco handle, you have to contend with the separation of the, the compartments. And it's such a princessy sort of feminine shape that I just, I don't dress up all the time. You guys see me dressy all the time, but I don't actually. I'm very casual a lot of times most of the time actually so the coco handle is not as suitable for all occasions and for all sort of um, outfits so i would still do gabrielle before coco handle so unless you're the opposite unless you're always dressy um one person that comes to mind is lindy's she's always so dressy looking and even when she's casual she's still so feminine casual that it works so well on her i kimberly 07 how often do you buy from your essay i want them to remember me but not go broke and is it okay to reserve hot items for multiple essays to increase your chances Ooh, okay how often do i buy from my essay every single season i would say i have not really missed I have not. I have not missed a single season. Chanel has six collections a year. Even if there was a season where I didn't buy as much, I would still at least buy some sort of accessories. Especially now that the collections are trickling in so slowly. Or maybe it has always been that way, but it's more apparent now. Like, they don't always receive everything at once. Not anymore, at least. Uh, especially during the pandemic. Maybe it was less obvious before, but... Uh, so when things come in throughout the season, you just end up using your essay a lot more frequently, right? So I definitely buy from my essay very frequently because every single season I do, every collection. If you don't want to go broke, well, I can't help you with that because that is the challenge and that is definitely a dangerous road. It can get very addictive, um, not only because I love the brand so much, but I just love the things that they come up with every single season so much. And no matter how many times I hear people say, I'm going to stop buying Chanel. Oh, they are crazy. They increase their prices so often. And I have to agree with you. I'm not disagreeing about the prices. I get very frustrated as well. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to be honest with myself, which is that I still love them no matter what, because they are always going to be something that I have my eye on. There hasn't been any single season where I'm like, nope, that's it. I don't like anything. I don't want to buy anything. There hasn't been. So yeah, I'm a pretty loyal customer. Uh, and from the point of view of just being a cheerleader of the brand, just because I love their brand so much, I pretty much wear a Chanel item every time I go out, right? Whether it's a piece of jewelry, a little scarf accessory, or a handbag, I pretty much always am wearing some sort of Chanel item. So in other words, it's easy to deplete your savings. Don't go broke, please. So the only way to avoid that, to not go broke, is to well, budget your things, first of all, and also know when to stop. Don't go overboard. Uh, I can go overboard sometimes, it's very dangerous, I have to admit. Um, I can't help you with that. <laughs> and whether you can reserve hot items with multiple essays, I don't think it's against the law. I don't know if they'll end up knowing and seeing that in your profile. I'm not sh so sure. In Canada, you guys probably know we only have six boutiques across Canada, only six for the entire country. And if my local essay is unable to get me what I want, 
which she will let me know usually if she can't end up getting it. Then I will try other boutiques. I don't ask two essays at the same time for the same item because usually when I ask for an item, I am fairly sure I'm going to buy it anyway. So if the both of them comes up, then I'll have to end up buying two. So that's kind of silly, right? You don't want to disappoint your essays either. You don't want them to do all the legwork to find you the item and you don't end up buying it from them. So to answer your question, I don't think it's best practice. Obviously, I'm speaking from the experience of being a Canadian shopper. I think it's slightly different if you're in the US. I think over there you have a different system somehow. Uh, I feel like it's different. I really do. Of course, you have VIPs. Those are a different category, but uh, from the point of view of non-VIPs, it's first come first serve and it's also whether your essay is able to help you. They are also going to try to be fair. If they got you something in a certain season that you really wanted, then the next season they're going to help another client of theirs to get what they really wanted and maybe decline your requests for that particular season. I'm sure they have to do a little bit of mental juggling. Also the benefit of using one essay um, more or frequently is that they will end up knowing you more and wanting to help you more in the future, right? If you end up always using different essays every time, it's just not best practice. Basically, the way I see it is that you win some and you lose some. Yellow Sparks Joy, will you be doing a closet sale soon? Oh my gosh, I think about that sometimes, yes. And I feel like I will have to, except I'm not so sure what to sell anymore because I've done one bigger closet sale earlier this year. I would say probably when my bag comes around because, you know, while I was trying to be good and be prepared, I did do some shopping, as you can see, and a lot of the unexpected shopping came from Chanel. The current season drove me crazy. I just loved everything about the current season and still waiting for a couple items. Jody Yamane, I know this isn't a typical question to ask, but how is Gina Love doing? I've been wondering if she's okay. You know what? I haven't spoken to Gina in a while too. The last time I spoke to her was this year. I hope that she's okay or that she's recovered from some of the things that's been going on. But um, yeah, I... I I miss her too. Ashi Tami, what if your luxury bags decline in value 50% or more? Do you still love them the same? Ooh, good question. Resale value of my bags is an important aspect. Not gonna lie. And I think for a lot of people too, right? It depends if I get enough cost per wear, I think. So if I don't get enough cost per wear and they lose 50% of their value, then I might not love them as much. I'm just being super honest at this point because I would be so sad if say, um, if say, right? Say this bag, right? So expensive, price has gone up a lot. But if I were to resell it and I lose more than 50% value of this when I resell it, I will be heartbroken, especially if I haven't gotten the mileage out of it. Resale value is definitely important, but it's not the whole picture. There certainly are going to be some items that I buy that I know are more of a passion purchase or things that I know won't retain value, such as shoes and accessories. You know, we're talking about, you know, hats, uh, ready to wear, those things, they don't really retain their value. Even fine jewelry, they they retain their value, but they don't retain full value when you resell them. So. The fashionable architect. What are your favorite transitional clothing pieces for the fall? This year, I have discovered my love for silk so much. I bought so many Hermes silk this year and also even this one that I am wearing today. So I feel like for sure silk is the best transitional weather. Um, it's not even a clothing, but it's an accessory that you add on to your clothing because you just wrap it around your neck, or you just have it around, right? Just when drape it when you're cold. It's just the most wonderful, wonderful transitional accessory because if you get hot, you just remove it and you're good to go, right? So silk, number one, absolute best investment, investment in terms of cost per wear. I feel like a good piece of knitwear just makes you comfortable and warm. It just gives you that good feeling because when I get cold, I get miserable. I am so miserable. <laughs> so a good piece of knitwear or cardigan that just is high quality but keeps you warm and soft is uh, is a must. 
This was a pretty new Balmain denim jacket. Absolutely stunning because of all the button detail and just the um, just how it drapes and how uh, cool the shoulder detail is. Good quality jackets, especially like the Balmain. Um, but also, you know, if you choose well, Zara jackets can also be very, very flattering. So uh, you just gotta accessorize, right? With your scarves, with your brooches, and with your bags. Yeah, I would say blazers, blazer jackets, blazer dresses, a good piece of cashmere, knitwear, um, your silk scarves as accessories, your hats. I love hats. I have been buying a lot of designer hats this year, maybe a little too many. Last year, you picked four bags for a tag video about the 10K to spend. If you're gonna do it all over again this year, will it be the same? Ooh, I don't even remember what I chose anymore. Um, probably not the same, I have to say. And I'll probably have to rewatch my video to see what I picked again because my collection changed drastically again in the span of a few months. I've added my classic flap, I've added some fine jewelry, I've added a lot of Hermes items that have become favorites. Do you guys want to see that video? Let me know in the, in the comment section. From Nika, how much do you think the small Chanel flap will cost next year? So let's just do some fun calculations, shall we? Just some predictions because I'm curious too, so how much is the classic flap now? Let me see. I don't even know how much the classic flap is today because there was a price increase since mine. 8775. So that alone, how much did I pay for mine? I forgot. It's bad to forget. <laughs> but let's just, I think I'll just put an approximate number. So I think it went up by 11%-ish or 10, 11%-ish. My guess is that it would go up by another 10 to 12 percent so if it was 12 percent yeah closer to this price before tax uh 9800 so my guess is that it will be just under 10,000 for the small classic flop next year that's my guess and even if we were to just do the 10 year thing right within 10 years um because right now it's this price and let's just say that 10 years ago, it's actually more than 10 years ago, it was $3,000. So divide by 11 years. So on average, every year it went up by at least $500. Plus tax will be over the $10,000 mark. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> I'll just buy one if I really like one, but uh, it kills me. And Barakat, what advice would you give your luxury beginner self? I'm starting out my passion for luxury. My first advice is to buy exactly what you want. Don't settle uh, because it's possible that I've settled here and there and um, it's never good because whenever I settle, I just usually end up regretting, which leads me to my advice number two is to avoid selling. Um, I mean, of course, if you have to sell, then sell, but avoid having to do too much sale because sales are hard, which leads me back to my advice number one, which is not to settle, get exactly what you want. And especially even if you have to pay a bit more for the next season, because price do increase, they will always increase. Just, you cannot stop that. I'm just telling you ahead of time, you cannot stop the prices from increasing. But just because you want to beat the price increase and settle, don't do that because it's it's just silly. I mean, you might as well just pay a bit more and not have to deal with regret and eventually selling your item, which will lead you to lose money anyway. <laughs> so just never settle. If you can, buy the more expensive item first. Let's say this one goes up by 5%. This one goes up by 5%. You're going to pay a lot more for this 5%, right? Because... It's 5% of $9,000. Third advice. Do I have a third advice? Third advice is... Yeah, don't beat yourself up, honestly. You can't have it all. You win some, you lose some. Honestly, you do. But it doesn't mean that you can't pursue it and it doesn't mean that you can't hustle. You, sh you should still hustle and don't feel bad about it. Um, it is what it is because it's competitive. Everyone wants the same things they are hot. Find yourself a good essay because 
that all those things takes time, right? Even finding a good essay is a challenge. It doesn't come easy. So just give yourself some slack and you got to do the work. You have to. Also from the same person, when you started your luxury journey years ago, did you aim to get here? How are you supposed to know what you're going to end up with? Because like I said, you win some, you lose some. I guess eventually you do get there, right? Even if you can't get your classic flap today, this season. You might get it next season, you might get it in three seasons, you might get it the next year because you might still be saving for it. So eventually you'll still get there if you're persistent and if you are hardworking and if you know what you want. My short answer is that I didn't aim necessarily uh, from the beginning. Like I did not know from the beginning that uh, my collection could be the collection that it is now. But every time I achieve something, I change my goal, right? You change your goal to aim for different things uh, at that time. So you're, you're constantly changing your goal. You're constantly aiming for that next level and that's how you improve. So in a way I did aim, but only from the little steps, right? The little baby steps. Lily Bay, when you finally get your Birkin, are you the type of person to put a rodeo on it or do you like it bare? I like it bare. <laughs> Um, rodeos, I'm not against them. I think in terms of charms, it's okay to have one or two. I'm just not about the charms. I just, um, some charms actually I find them silly. I actually will decline some charms if I was offered them because I just think that some charms are silly, such as the little orange bag. That one I actually don't like. Like, don't give me that. Don't even offered to me is probably too expensive. I don't want to spend that kind of money on that. I'd rather use that money towards a small leather goods that I will enjoy more or another scarf. I actually prefer buying another scarf. Uh, rodeos, I'm not against them. I think it will be cute to have one or two. Overjoyed. What's your ideal lineup for a 12 bag collection? Ooh, ideal lineup. Let's just see. Okay, let's just off the top, right? I'm not planning this. Birkin 25, Kelly Mini, Kelly 25. I want to say Lindy, <laughs> Picotin, Chanel Classic, Chanel 19, Gabrielle, Trendy, Chanel Mini, of course. Um, oh my gosh, I'm running out. I only have two options left. I have to add another mini because I have to do rectangular and square. So I'm only, I'm only allowed one more now. So since I'm only allowed one more, I'll have to go with a Chanel micro bag. Yes, I love them that much. I have to have one. Uh, if you count that as a bag, right? If you don't count them, then I'll have several. But if you count that as a bag, I'll have to have at least one. If we don't count the micro bags as a bag, because they are SLGs, then I'll add the Dior. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, what? Why is the Dior last minute? Um, it's because if I have the mini Kelly, then I can live without the Dior, I feel. I feel. I don't know. I'm being super, super honest here. If you had to do a 12 bag lineup, in your collection like what would it be what would it be how would your collection look like if you can only keep 12 bags in your collection and it doesn't have to be all the bags that you own but it can be if you're new to my channel and you loved this q a make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and another way for you to support me is also to become my channel member where you get members only exclusive perks as well as exclusive content i would love to have you as a member as well thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye